Welcome to Tyrion Characterology. This is the show where we uncover the backstories of the characters that roam the Tyrion surface. Last time we talked about rocks in our quest to uncover the individual stories of the group known as Destiny's Edge 2.0 or the Bee Iconics. This time we'll be diving into the story of the fearless Norn Brahm Airson. So let's get started. The legend of Brahm begins at the age of seven with his father, Borgi the Sun Chaser, lying on his deathbed with Brahm at his side. As Borgi lays ill, he charges Brahm to stay with Ungvi Rogna and Brunhilde the Mother Bear so that they may take care of him. As Wolf arrives to carry his father into the mists, Borgi reveals to Brahm the name of his mother, Ares the Galkin, but he forbids him from informing Air of Borgi's ill state in case she would decide to stray from her own legend. These last words carry with Brahm, who envisions his mother as selfish and uncaring. The first time we meet Brahm, he's begging Ridlock Brimstone to help him defend his town, Crackstead, from an invasion by the Molden Alliance. My people are hunters. They don't know how to fight an army. True, but that doesn't make me your keeper. You're in the wrong place. Go talk to Newt Whitebear. I'm up to my eyeballs and refugees. I'm Air's son. I heard. I thought you would help. Air has no son. Get out of my office. Now! As Ridlock says, not everyone knows that Air has a son. It's something both Brahm and Air has kept secret for many years. Despite Brahm's dislike of his mother, he finds himself desperate enough to ask for help. Dredge and Flamechar are burning our homes. I am well aware. The smart ones are evacuating the coming year. We can protect them. The smart ones? You mean the wounded and near death ones? The fierce are fighting, dying! I'm sorry, I can't spare anyone. What about you, Air? Graham, you need to stay here in Holbrack. The people of Cragstead will. No! You stay, cowering around your bonfires. As soon as I restock my supplies, I'm going to get my people. Bram enlists the pack commander to help defend Cragstead, but they're too late to save everyone. Bram! They took Otilia and her family. They what? Where? Why? They're collecting prisoners. I don't know where they took them or why. I hate this. We have to help Otilia and her family. Brahm ventures into the mines of Diesa Plateau, where the Molden Alliance has built their facility. Incidentally, Rox has been charged by Ridlock to put an end to the Molden Alliance. She parties up alongside Brahm, the pack commander, and the vigil to bring down the Molden facility. At the end of their endeavor, Rox and Brahm seem to have become accustomed to one another, but decide to split up to take care of their own things. I feel good. Exhausted. And hungry. Yeah. So if you're ever near Cragstead, you better stop by. If I come to Cragstead, it won't be to lounge around your hearth. It'll be to grab you from mission supports. I'll keep my mace handy. You do that. I'll see you around, Cub. Brahm decides to return to Holbrack. I thought you should know. They were almost all. By the time I got to Cragstead, a dozen of my friends. I see. May the spirits guide them to peace. If we'd stood together... No. It's every hunter for himself. Right. It's not that simple. Yes, it is. What are you going to do now? You care? I'm gonna rebuild Cragstead with whoever's left of my friends. The smart choice is to regroup and finish the fight later. Whatever you do, may the spirits keep you safe. Next time we meet Brahm, he has been invited to join Rox in Divinity's Reach to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee. The Jubilee is unfortunately sabotaged by Scarlet Briar. I smell trouble and a chance for glory. I knew bringing you along was a good idea. Come on, let's get involved in stuff that's none of our business. The heroes fortunately end up halting Scarlet's plans and save Divinity's Reach from further disaster. Seeing how well their partnership works, Brahm eventually accompany Rox to Keswick Hills where the two first meet Casimir Mead and Marjorie Delacroix, the two humans who unveiled a monstrous tower called the Tower of Nightmares, inhibited by the Toxic Alliance. The four of them, along with the help of the pack commander, face their inner demons inside the tower in an effort to bring it down. They succeed and find that Scarlet Briar had simply used the Toxic Alliance to help advance her secret plans. Scarlet expands her terror and begins testing huge machines in Lorna's Pass. Joining the fight against the machine known as the Marionette is Marjorie, Casimir, Rox, and Brahm, as well as a young Asuran prodigy named Timey and her golem Scruffy. The battle is won and the B Iconics return to Lion's Arch. Here, the newfound friendship between Rox and Brahm is challenged when Ridlock demands that Rox take down Scarlet Briar in order to become part of his warband. If I kill Scarlet, I'm in the warband. You'd rather be in your fancy warband than with people who've been beside you all this time? That's not what I said. 
It's a big deal to get into the Stone Warband. Why? Because it'll make you special? You're already special. At least to me. As Bram leaves Rock Society, he bumps into Taimi, who has been dragged to Lion's Arch by none other than Logan Thackeray. Bram, there you are! Somebody care to tell me why this child was on the battlefield? Hey! I'm not a child! Not you, this is Surin girl. Help! Help! Save me from this creepy human! It's okay, I'm a Crichton Seraph. The kid's in no danger. Bram! Don't let him take me away! Please! Taimi easily tricks Logan into believing Brahm is responsible for her, and so Logan leaves her with Brahm. You're not my responsibility. It's okay, Bram. You can take me home now. I live in Rada soon. Huh? What? Where do you live? Maybe we could go there instead. Taimi is clever and slowly tricks Brahm into staying with her. But a Scarlet's officer, Maitrin, escapes the Lion's Arch Jail and flees into the mists. Taimi is determined to follow Scarlet's trail. Both Brahm and Taimi now find themselves at the edge of the mists, a battlefield not suited for a young Asura. Yet here, the two come to know each other a lot better. Bram, will you tell me a story while we wait? After you ran off on me? And all the abuse you heaped on me since we got here? I did plenty of that back in Cragstead. You don't spend much time around Asura, do you? We only abuse people we like, or those we're trying to improve. Fine, I'll assume you like me. As they return from the mists, they find that Scarlet, alongside her different factions, have attacked Lion's Arch, devastating the city. Brahm, Rox, Kashmir, and Marjorie all come to the aid of the pack commander and Lion Guard in regaining the control of the city. They breach Scarlet's Breachmaker and follow her to the lower depths of her monstrous machine, only to find the crazed Silvari on the ground still fighting for dear life. Aren't you even curious about why I did it? All this chaos and destruction? Doesn't matter now. You're done. In an attempt to end Scarlet, both Brahm and Marjorie are badly hurt. Seeing her friend hurt, Rox decides to protect Brahm, giving up her chance to kill Scarlet. The pack commander steps in and put an end to Scarlet, but unfortunately, she still succeeds in waking the Elder Dragon Morjanov. The heroes celebrate Scarlet's end, but not for long. The dragon's roar calls them to action. They venture into Dry Top, a desolate area heavily influenced by Mordremoth's power. Mordremoth's power grows into the underground ley lines and he infects the waypoints all over Tyria. So Taimi sets out to find a solution, with her newfound friend, Brown by her side, protecting her. They eventually find that the terror of Mordremoth is too powerful for the few of them to handle. And so, as the group tries to assemble the world leaders to combat Mordremoth, Brown once again confronts Air. You don't understand. This is bigger than us. Jormag is dangerous, but it's only one member of the Pack of Elder Dragons. I understand more than you think. No, you don't. If you did, you'd know that Mordremoth's reach is spreading. Its tendrils are showing up all over the place. To gain Nude White Bear's allegiance, Air and Brahm venture to the Far Shiver Peaks where they fight side by side to take on a dominant group of the Sons of Svanya. After the battle, the two reconcile some of their differences. Well done, Bram. That was impressive. Uh, thanks. That was the first time I've ever seen you fight. I guess the legends are true. Oh, thank you. Let's head back to Holbrek and we can celebrate with a feast. What are you saying? From here on, Brahm's relationship to his mother only improves. Everyone, this is my son, Bram. What did you say? Yes, I see the resemblance. The B iconic group, now with the help of the full pack force, push further into Mordrum infested regions to confront Mordremoth. The pack fleet is launched in an attempt to stop the terror that is Mordremoth before it's too late, but they are shot down from the sky. On board the glory of Tyria is Air, who alongside the pack crash into the jungle. Here we leave Brahm and the rest of the Bee Iconics as they prepare to enter the heart of Maguma to save the pack forces, the members of Destiny's Edge and confront Mordremoth. Next time, we'll take a look at the story of Taimi. Thank you for watching, until next time, I will see you in the mists.